nice to see you. Welcome on in to Low Country Money Talk. I'm Jessa Jeremiah here with expert, finally back in the house today. Phil Lloyd is here with Revolutionary Financial Group and it's sure nice to see you. It's glad to be here, Jessa. There's a lot to talk about today and boy, there's a lot of stock market news, a little Ooh. bit of worry out there. We're really going to talk today about bear markets and finding out if we have time to recover. So a big yeah. topic on a lot of folks' minds. Ooh, yeah, a lot going on this year. So people are really wondering right now, Phil, if the stock market is still a good place to invest sure. your money. What do you think? Well, you know, we have to have some of that type of turn. What, what return? What's our uh, choices? So with inflation at 7%, you know, we, we banks, you know, CDs, um, maybe treasuries, all those, you know, are, are way underperforming um, inflation. Mm -hmm. So we, we have to have a certain amount in the market, but also, you know, we need to be careful how much we have based upon our age. Right. So that's, that's a big thing. But if we look at the market overall, you know, 100 years or so, eight to 10% average rate of return on the standard and poor's 500 index. So, you know, we just have to make sure that we have something set aside during the, the turmoil in the markets or the bear markets where we can take our income, you know, until we can get things straightened out a bit, I guess. Yeah, and that's, I think, what the big question is on, on people's minds right now is, you know, for a lot of folks who have been enjoying the fruits of the bull sure. market and are retired, mm -hmm. now we're wondering, you know, do we have time to recover and how long does it typically take to recover from a stock market crash? Yeah, it depends on how far it goes down. Uh, I did a little math, this, number, some, or this week some numbers are coming out. So the NASDAQ index officially went down 10%. So we consider that a correction. Okay, so that, that index is down 10%. I also heard some news that the Standard & Poor's 500 index, that over 20% of the companies that comprise that index uh, are already in a bear market, meaning that they're 20% off their high. I would say, you know, after uh, this week's performance, it could be even more. So it makes us a little jittery, but it also is a great time for us to, to step back and see if we're uh, too aggressive with the market based upon our age and some of these factors. So I think it's an important thing that we do have funds in the market, but we have the right amount as far as the percentage goes. Because, you know, if we're talking about retirees, which we, you know, that's most of the clients that I work with are retirees. Uh, we have to take a look and say, hey, you know, if I'm 70 or 75 and I have this correction in the market and, and just bare territory means that we're 20 percent off our eyes, but we can go down even lower than that. So, you know, the one thing we were talking about, if, if the S&P index went down 50 percent just to break even and get even, I have to get 100 percent. Wow. I mean, you know, that could take years and years. So if I'm 75. You know, I'm not contributing to retirement anymore. I've had these great 13 years of investing. I should have made a lot of money, sell high, you know, get the percentages right. But there's a lot of factors other than just the market that are looking for our savings. And let's unpack that just a little bit here in this first segment. In you know, people who are already retired or about to go into retirement, what are some of those other factors they should consider for sure. investing? Well, uh, the first thing they should consider is uh, how do they feel this week? <laughs> so when the market's just blowing up, the whole stomach test, you know, am I losing sleep? You know, is it affecting my health or am I obsessing on this? So, you know, that could be tolerance. Maybe you can't tolerate that much in the market. Uh, the other thing we need to look at is time horizon. How long uh, do these funds that we save, how long do they have to last? What type of return do I need on these funds? Uh, what about health concerns? Do I need money for that? Other areas, all these different things. Spending habits, you know, uh, all these are things to consider. The best thing I could say would be to get with an advisor, go in and have a plan written up, take a look. Uh, at how long your money is going to last based upon usage and inflationary and other factors like that. Yeah, I mean, there's never been a better time to have an expert on your side helping you out navigating the changes that we are seeing. So we've got a lot more to talk about, of course, as we unpack the rest of these questions and the show here on Low Country Money Talk. And we will be right back. Welcome back 
uh, in from break, we're here still at Low Country Money Talk because we have lots more to discuss today. Phil Bloyd, as you see, is with us still with Revolutionary Financial Group and lots of questions to talk about. It's nice to have you back on yes. the other side of the break. Yeah. Let's continue our discussion here. All right. So we talked before the break, in case you're just joining us, about you know bear markets. We're worried if we're going to have time to recover. Lots of conversation mm -hmm. around that. And we did make some good ground on that topic. What we didn't get to talk about, though, yet is income allocation. Of sure. course, folks worried if they're going to outlive the money that they have and the money they have coming in. Mm -hmm. So what can you give us advice-wise? That's a big fear, Jessa. Uh, back in the day when I started doing uh, public engagements, we'll say, uh, two of the largest fears. Public speaking was number one. Isn't that funny? Yeah. Them. And number two was outliving their income, mm -hmm. especially for retirement. Maybe they'll switch around. Hey. Maybe right now, especially. What I always would tell people is, hey, we got a little bit of both of that, you know, going on tonight at the seminar or whatever. But uh, all seriousness, it, we have a lot of challenges these days uh, for our income as we're retired. So let's say we're retired. But first, we look at our income. Say we have Social Security coming in. That's a big part of most retirees' so, uh, income. We did get a little bit of a pay raise. I think it was 5.9%, but inflation seven. That's so, right, so we're still down. <laughs> okay. uh, that math I can do. Yeah. So, so Social Security, uh, some people may have a pension. You know, We used to call them the dinosaur pensions because they're going away, being replaced by uh, 401ks and such. But if I worked... Uh, for the government or in some type of public job or something, I may have a pension where I get X amount of dollars a month uh, for the rest of my life. And if I pass away, my spouse may receive part of that benefit as well. So we have those two things to start off with. Now, the difference is what are we spending a month? Okay, the, the best way to determine that is look at your checkbook. Okay. Balance that checkbook, that's right. So if we go back about 12 months, we get an idea of what our expenses are, you know, what we're spending. So if we're in a deficit there, the money's got to come from somewhere. Mm -hmm. So that money in general would come from savings. If I'm over 72, I have to do my required minimum distribution from my IRA account or 401k or whatever it may be. So I'd also count that as income first. Then do I have accounts that pay dividends and interest and all that? So we look at that too. And it's like, do we still need more? Uh, and if the answer is yes, then we have to go to the saving side of things and say, okay, where are we going to get that income? The one thing that I hate doing, Jess, and I talk about it all the time, is I hate, I would hate to sell equities in a down position to get some income. So it's very important that we have some assets that if we get into that bear market where the, the stocks are pulling back and we have a lot of equities, growth equity stocks, funds, whatever they may be, we don't want to be selling those assets as they're retreating uh, because when they recover, they won't recover as fast because we spend down you know, some of the funds. So the idea would be to have a separate area where we can go and draw from assets that when the, the market pulls back, that these assets are stable. Now there's several forms of those. I don't want to get into all that today, but it's very important that we have, in my workshops or seminars, I always talk about having a, a bear IRA and a bull IRA. Real simple. So if we're in a bear market, and I needed income, I would withdraw from the bear portion of the IRA, meaning that those funds would be stable and wouldn't deplete. Right. As in a uh, in the bull IRA, of course, those would be more growth oriented. So when the market is up, I would draw from my gains. Right. You know, so, so it's very important to have that for income purposes because if we don't plan income properly and people don't pay attention, they just jump in and take income from whatever asset they're thinking about. Well, when the market does recover, it's not going to be as effective. Wow, what a smart way to think about that so that you're really protected in either case mm -hmm. and you know, talking about making the right decision based on what the market sure. is doing. Obviously more questions. Sure. That was a great segment right. because lots of good information in there, but we have more to come. So I hope you'll stick with us in Low Country Money Talk. Mm -hmm. We'll be right back. Welcome back into the 
program, we are talking money. You know why? Because it's Low Country Money Talk. A lot of folks talking money right now as we watch the stock market fluctuate. We're talking a little bit about that, what that means for retirees. And also we've discussed so far a little bit about income allocation and guess what, Phil Lloyd's here again from Low Country, I'm sorry, from Revolutionary Financial Group here on Low Country Money Talk. Close enough. Nice, nice right? to see you. All right. Good <laughs> We've got good more good. to talk about. Okay, so we've talked about the stock market, we've talked a little bit about income. Mm -hmm. I have to admit, one of the areas I fail sometimes to think about is the fees yeah. associated with what I'm doing with my money. I think a lot of us sort of mm -hmm. omit that from the equation. Mm -hmm. Not you though, and this is something that you're you're good at helping us really reduce fees to help us save money. Let's sure. talk about what kinds of fees are out there. Well, there's a lot of them. Yeah. And you know, the, the thing Jess is a lot of people, they don't know what their fees are. So the very first thing I like to do, you know, people will come in and visit with me and they're like, well, what do we do first? Well, the first thing we want to see is your current situation, you know, and, and I will run a Morningstar report and a Morningstar report will kind of show me what's going on with your assets and how they compare against benchmarks and averages and all these things. But one of the other important factors of that report is it will tell me how much we're losing in expenses. So that's very important because your bucket has a hole in it. Right, absolutely. You know? There's a song about that. We don't want a <laughs> hole in our bucket when no. we're talking money. Well, in this case, the hole in this in the bucket we're speaking of now would be expenses. Mm -hmm. So let me give an example. So a person comes in and I'll say, uh, what are you paying in expenses? And even in their 401k, they would have expenses in what they're investing in, okay? And they have they are disclosed, but most people you know, just look over that. So the point being is, is how much am I losing in expenses and can I do better? So if we save in expenses, that's more interest that can be compounded over the years, of course. So let's take a look. A person comes in, they say, Phil, I'm paying 1%. I'm paying a 1% fee or I'm paying 1.5% to my advisor. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, oh, okay, well, let's see what we've got going on. Usually the fee is determined uh, on how much the advisor is managing. Uh, the more money that you have for the, the uh, investment advisor, normally the lower the fee. Not always, but mm -hmm. normally. So that's one thing. Now the other thing will determine the fee is what type of asset class or position does your investment advisor buy in your portfolio for you? So there could be, now that's where we lose people. I'm already lost. Yeah, yeah. I'm that further. Well, you? <laughs> because they're like, well, I'm, I'm paying 1% or I'm paying 1.5%. I'm like, okay, great. You know, you're paying 1%. Um, usually uh, the advisor will charge monthly, quarterly, or whatever. But over the course of the year, let's say 1%. And that part's clear. You know, we understand that. We kind of mm -hmm. know what we're getting into. But then. That's just the beginning. That's the beginning. That's right? one of the fees. Mm -hmm. So then the next thing we have to do is take a look at that report I was speaking of and what is in the portfolio. Are there mutual funds? Well, mutual funds have fees too. Is it an exchange traded fund? Well, they have fees too. Uh, most and if I buy an individual stock, there wouldn't be a fee. But when I see most people, they, they may come in and they think they're paying 1%, but when I look at the report, I see there's an expense ratio for this position inside there. There's an expense ratio for this one and this one. And you could easily think that you're paying one, but maybe you're paying two. Right. Okay. So we've got a minute left for this topic. Is there any way that we can have control over this? How do you save money on those expenses? Because that can add up big time sure. over the course of a lifetime in your retirement. Well, if you think you're paying 15000 a year in expenses and you're paying thirty. That's a big difference. You know, that could be an extra, we're talking about income, that could be an extra $1,000 a month right. and saved fees. So what we try to do, you know, if we have a, an equity portfolio with individual positions, like say stocks or so, there's no fees to those. So then if, if I'm paying my advisor to, to uh, have stocks in my portfolio, then I know I'm paying the 1%. If the other way I need to sit down with them and see if we're if they're buying these ETFs or mutual funds, are there other ones in the same category that can cost less? Got it. Okay. 
well, those are good things to look at, obviously, because the savings on some of those expenses can be huge, especially when you're talking about being on a fixed income over the course of your retirement, so a big factor. All right, Phil, we've got more questions for you. We're going to talk more here on Low Country Money Talk, and we sure hope we see you on the other side of the break. We'll be right back. here on Low Country Money Talk on the other side of this break because we're going to kind of wrap this up for you, put a nice bow on it. We've talked about a lot so far with Phil. We've got the expert here, of course, from Revolutionary Financial Group. Phil, we've talked about a lot so far. It goes fast. It goes fast. Yes. We, You know, people are wondering about the stock market. We've covered that. We're, there, we're talking about, you know, retirement income that's coming in and, and really how that's getting allocated. We discussed that. We talked about a big topic, which is fees and ways that we can save money and what we really should be looking for there. Uh, so that was a great, great discussion. I want to spend the rest of our time together really looking ahead at 2022. As we know, you know, advisors have had a, a time in the market that we've had to really, you know, see a lot of gains for their clients. Uh, but, you know, we're, we're moving into some challenging times. We're talking sure. about inflation. We're talking about the stock market drop. And, and that's going to pose some challenges for investors, for advisors. Mm -hmm. And how do we navigate that? What do sure. you have to think about? Well, you know, here's where experience, I think, uh, plays a big role. <laughs> yes. So I know I don't look this old but I've been doing this for 30 years. So we've been through this before. So we always look at history to kind of see how things replay themselves and they usually do. But investors, Jessa, have, as you mentioned, had it very good, I'll say, yeah. over the last 13 years. You know, we had a little blip here, you know, March a while back with the COVID and all that, but and we recovered that really quick. So we've got about 13 years of huge gains. And if I was retiring, hey, I've had the, you know, I'm lucky to have had that 13 years to build up all that accumulation if I'm a retiree. And if I've lived in retirement for 13 years, I've seen the biggest growth in my assets, or at least I should have over that 13 year period. Now, what I like to tell people, and at our event the other night, I was telling people, uh, now it's going to get a little tough. Mm -hmm. So you've got three different things at least coming at you right now. Uh, one, you've got a government that, that is about moving into the $30 trillion in debt. Okay. Uh, you have the Federal Reserve who started that term transitory. Right. And then uh, inflation has become more than transitory. Mm -hmm. And many economists see inflation being around <clears throat> quite a while maybe all through next year and then some. Yeah. So, uh, and then the chairman tells us, Chairman Powell, that we can't use that word transitory anymore. And I'm like, you're the one that started it, okay? So we have that, yes. uh, we have inflation, we have the government, if you've been keeping up a little bit with what they're trying to do, you know, they're trying to get more taxes out of us, you know. Luckily, we're still in a relatively low tax uh, situation, but uh, th this current tax code that we're under and the income taxes, that's due to expire uh, through 2025. So in 2026, uh, if nothing's done, which some people would say Congress is good at doing nothing, if that expires, uh, then we get the big tax jump automatically. So we have inflation going after our retirement savings. We have the government that's looking for new ways to gather our taxes. I can add cost of living in there as yeah, well, absolutely. way up. And then now, guess what? Wall Street, as you're seeing, is also looking to come in and take our retirement savings. You know, if we throw some health issues in there, some long-term care issues, uh, and assisted living things, wow, there's a lot of things as a retiree that we're gonna be dealing with that over the last 13 years, maybe we were on auto drive because the market was helping us out so much with our savings. Yeah, a lot of challenges, a lot of factors, but here's the silver lining in it all. This might be the time where it really separates the, the investors who 
our our new at this mm -hmm. with the investors and the advisors yeah. who have experience and mm -hmm. so it's it's a perfect time to have an experienced advisor that can help you sure. navigate this how do we find out more information so we can take a good look yeah. at what we're doing uh, go to our website you know you'll see it advertised all throughout the show uh, look let's do a financial plan let's see you know at current situations how long your money will last that's the first step yeah. and I would advise everybody to take this time because I believe things are about to get tough yeah absolutely so we need some great advice going forward make sure it's gonna last for us Phil Boyd Revolutionary Financial Group thanks so all much right. we'll have you back, you know? yeah, I'll be back we'll see you next time we'll see you next time thanks for joining us Thank you.